Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. Crime is not a respecter of time or of places. A district attorney knows that it may strike at high noon on the streets of the city or at midnight in the country. This one started on a lonely stretch of highway between two small towns on the outskirts of the county. Hey! Hey, stop! Having some trouble? Yeah. My car comes out on me. I'm trying to get it started again for a half hour. Uh, maybe I can get it going for you. I know a little something about cars. Okay, for try? You bet. Go ahead. Well, it looks like she ain't about to start, friend. You must be out of gas. Gage says she's half full. Yeah, Gage must be busted then. Choking her like I did should have flooded the carburetor. If gas was feeding through, we'll get the smell of it. We had better check the tank. Get a stick or something to shove in here for measuring, will you? You bet. Now, this branch ought to do it. It's good enough. Get here. Empty. Guys a bone. Well, that leaves me in great shape. I got a siphon hose in my trunk. I'm kind of low myself, but... Yeah, we can drain enough out of my tank to get you to Cedarville. It's only four miles. I live there. Is there an all-night station there? Oh, afraid not. Just a village. But I can put you up for the night if you don't mind barking in the jail. What do you mean, the jail? <laughs> I'm the constable. Oh. Oh, well, don't worry. The jail's clean. Now, come on if we're going to get you started. Yeah, you bet. Those is in here someplace if I can find it. You got a match on you? You bet. Gonna be here someplace. Guess I let a lot of junk pile up. You can't hold this match much longer. Let's light another one. It was the last one in the book. Well, come on. Have you got that hose or haven't you? Point wasn't getting so at me, mister. Then how come you didn't know the gas gauge in your car was busted? It must have just happened, I guess. Seems to me there's a sedan just like yours on my state bulletin, a hot car seat. That you got proof of ownership on you? I got proof all right in my pocket, pointed right square at your belly. Uh, use your head, young fella. A stolen car's a bad charge, but it ain't nearly as bad as using a gun to resist arrest. You better hand that gun over and come with me. <laughs> Why, you rube, you small town hick. <laughs> You stinking room. <laughs> Come on. There's a car coming on your feet. Come on, I said, on your feet. Give it that brush. Now, if they stop, you're going to get it right through the middle. You'll get yours for this. Help! Help! <laughs> Across country bus. Cop, go ahead and yell. Yell your heart out. Try to out yell that motor. Now we can make a deal, cop. I ain't making any deals with you. Oh, yes, you are. And here it is. A bullet in exchange for your car. 
You're one cop nobody's going to worry about anymore. Constable Wiley didn't have an easy death, Chief. Look at that. I don't see him hanging. He tried to call out to the road. Did he have a family? Yeah, he had an invalid wife, two daughters, three grandchildren. Well, when you've got a hot seat out on Wiley's car, we might get a break. Uh, I doubt it. He probably got where he wanted to go and ditched it during the night. The medical examiner figured Wiley's been dead since about uh, 3 a.m. and was probably shot a couple of hours before that. Yeah. Joe had a good start, all right. Let's get back to the road. Chief, we've got one thing going for us. Prince of the man we're after might have been among the ones the lab crew lifted from the car he abandoned when he stole Wiley's. I know. They're checking him all through the record bureau in the city. I asked Miss Miller to bring out the report if they come across anything promising. If only we knew which way the killer took off. Best guess is that he was headed for the city. Now why? The car he abandoned was pointed that way. He wouldn't try to hide out in any of the smaller towns between here and there. It'd be too easy to trace. Well, it looks like they let a car through our roadblock down there. Yeah. Well, that's a Central Division squad car. What's oh, Miss Miller? Yeah. Must have been something in the fingerprint report. Yeah. Hi, Miss Miller. Hello, Harrington. Mr. Garrett, the lab thought you'd better have the fingerprint information right away. Well, what is it? One set of prints they lifted from the car has been positively identified through interstate records. They belong to Rex Lang. Rex, Rex Lang. Lang? Yes, sir. Morgan said the impressions were clear. There can't be any mistake. I, uh, I made a copy of Lang's criminal record. I don't need it. I know Lang's record by heart. You'd better get back to the city, Miss Miller, in case anything comes up at the office. Yes, sir. Where will you be? I want to make some stops along the road. Diners, service stations, places like that. We'll see you later. All right. Rex Lang, born in Idaho? Yes, Pocatello, I think. He fancies himself as a ladies' man. Before he went to the reformatory? Pretty young, Chief. It was a high school girl who smuggled him a knife. He used to kill the reformatory guard. And there have been indications that he used a woman as a lookout on burglaries where his prints have been found. I'd love to get him. Harrington, what I'm going to say now isn't an order. I want that to be clear in your mind. Yeah. What are you driving at, Chief? If you ever corner Rex Lang, you'll have a mad dog in your hands. But I want him taken alive if it's humanly possible. I understand, Chief. Now, remember, it's not an order. You may have to play it his way. I still think maybe I'll be able to recognize him from that old mugshot. He's a cop killer, Harrington. Just make sure you don't recognize him too late. I've been trying to get you for two hours. I'm sorry. I told you we were checking places on the highway into town. I know. I just missed you at a service station and two diners. A Constable Wiley's car has been found. Oh, yeah? Where? An empty lot at the end of Jasper Avenue, Harrington. Lab crew's working it over now. How'd you make out? Oh, nothing, I'm afraid. You better get into my office, Harrington. And we... Oh, maybe the lab report now. District Attorney's office. Yes, Morgan, you just came in. I'll take it, Miss Miller. Hello, Morgan. Hello, Chief. Just finished checking Wiley's car. I got some more of Lang's fingerprints. Well, that pins it to him, all right. You find out how long the car's been there? Yeah. Guy in the house across from the lot was up walking his baby last night. The kid was teething. Said he heard the car, looked out of the window, saw a man leave it in the lot. You get a good enough look to give us a description? No. Did you know what time it was? You said 1.30 a.m., and that checks. With what? End of the subway line is only a block from where the car is ditched. I had one of the boys check, make a call to the night cashier. I figured if Lang left the neighborhood, he left by subway. No good thinking. Did the night cashier see him? Yeah. At least he saw a guy. Came in just in time to get the 140. Only passenger at that station. Well, could the cashier give you a description? Not much. Brown suit and half, that's all. Hat was pulled way down, he said. He sure was burned. Well, who? The cashier. Lang stole a magazine from him. A magazine? Yeah. thing called Magic Mirror. You know, the picture magazine. Well, how'd that happen? Well, this cashier was 
Pierre is some kind of screwball, I think. About a year ago, this magazine did a feature story on the subway system. The cashier's picture was in it. I guess he kept it around to show people whenever he got a chance. Yeah. So Lang was sitting on the platform waiting for the train. He offered him the magazine to look at. He expected Lang to come across his picture and notice it, I guess. But then the bell rang for the train, and Lang galloped off with the magazine. The guy couldn't leave the cash booth and chase him, so Lang Look, Morgan, away. excuse me. But that magazine may mean a lot. I'm hanging up. Talk to you later. Chief, what is it? A break, maybe. Miss Miller, I want you to get on the phone right away. Yes, sir. Call Magic Mirror Magazine. Get the editor. Get the date and the description of a cover for an issue they put out last year with a feature story on the city subway system. Yes, sir. You come in here, Angan. Coming. Take that phone, extension three. Call the city sanitation department. Tell them to hold up all pickups of refuse from subway containers and subway entrance containers. Yeah, but why are you so... Just do it. I'm going to contact the transit commission. Get their inspectors out. Lang had a year-old copy of that magazine. If we're lucky, he might not have left it on the train. He might have carried it off and dropped it in a refuse container. And if we find out which container... We'll know where he left the train and it'll give us a good idea of what part of the city he's hiding in. Get to it. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the cop killer, here is an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A local constable had been killed on the outskirts of the county by a known and much-wanted murderer. He had driven the constable's stolen car into the city, abandoned it, and taken a subway, inadvertently stealing an old copy of a magazine from the subway cashier. We traced the magazine to a trash box at an uptown station. But there, all clues faded out. Four days in this crummy neighborhood is beginning to get me down, Chief. Even if Lane did come to this area, he might have gone by now. Just the same, we'll keep looking until we're sure. The whole district has been under around the clock surveillance since we found that old magazine. Now, how about some breakfast? There's that Spanish place across the street, Lobo's. Yeah, that's as good as any place around here, I guess. I'm so hungry, I'll even eat enchiladas for breakfast. Let's cross. You know, Chief, why is it that every mug we're after hides out in a tenement district? Now... What makes you think he isn't in the better section around here, where the hotels and the shops are? It's only two blocks away. Well, there are more people around here and fewer questions asked. Yeah, I guess you're right. Buenos dias, senor. Oh, hello. Oh, oh uh, let's take a booth, huh? I'm tired of eating off counters. Wish to see the menu, senores? I have everything. Yeah, make mine uh, fruit juice, a couple of eggs scrambled, easy with bacon and toast and jelly. Oh, that sounds good to me. Double it. Ah, buenos dias, senorita. I will be with you in one moment. You bet. Yeah, uh, coffee now or later, senor? Uh, later. You go ahead and wait on the lady first. I just want to sit here and give my feet a rest. That's it. Thought you were going to have enchiladas for breakfast. Yeah, when he gets through with the eggs, maybe I'll wish I had. I just want a container of coffee to go, Lobo. Please. You want it black? No, cream and sugar. Here. Thirteen cents change. Uh, thank you, senorita. You bet. Sit tight, Hyam. Oh, miss. Uh, just a minute, please. What? Were you speaking to me? Uh, yes, uh, I happened to look out of the booth and saw you. Don't I know you from someplace? I don't think so. Oh, you look familiar. You live around here, don't you? You bet. Well, I'm a, a photographer. I used to have my shop around here about a year ago. Maybe I took some photos of you. Uh, no, not me. I've only been in the neighborhood for six weeks. Oh. Well, maybe it was someplace else. Where do you come from? New Jersey. Well, that's your home state? You bet. Well, my mistake, I guess. I was sure I knew you. Excuse me, please. You bet. You have the wrong senor either, no? Well, maybe. Cancel our orders. Here's a dollar for your trouble. Come on, Harrington. We're leaving. See you later, Lobo. Oh, there she is. Turn in the corner. 
cheap. Do you mind letting me in on this? Did you notice how that girl kept saying you bet? Yeah. And what about it? Well, that reformatory report on Lang, the part about his habits, his favorite expression was, you bet. So? She picked up that habit someplace, Harrington. Probably from being around somebody who uses the expression constantly. And that could mean Rex Lang. Let's see where she's taking that container of coffee. Well, there she goes, Chief. Yeah, a jewelry store. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to find Lang in there. She went to the back of the store. I'm going for a phone booth. Have Miss Miller check on a few things. You stay right here on this block, though. Walk to the corner with me. If she's Lang's girl, she wouldn't be working tight, Chief. I can think of a good reason she might be working in a jewelry store. You mean casing it for Lang to knock over? Yeah, it's been done before. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous for her, Chief. I'm going to have Miss Miller check on Lang's methods and robberies. He's pulled them in the past. You see what you can find out along the street here. She's a very pretty girl, so it's a safe bet she's been noticed by other shopkeepers along here. Maybe one of them will know her name, where she lives. Uh, I'll tip our hand if I go around asking too many questions. Well, don't make them sound like official questions. Make them sound like you're just another man who's seen a pretty girl. Now get going. I'll call Miss Miller and wait till she calls me back. Meet you at the car in about an hour. Lang's known burglaries in the past include two jewelry stores, four finance companies, and a private home where the owner was in the habit of keeping expensive jewelry and cash in the safe. Well, how about the girl angle? Yes, sir. A girl answering the description you gave me worked in almost all the places I've mentioned. In each case, she put a job a month or two before the burglary took place. Well, that's the modus operandi I've been looking for. Well, thanks for the information, Miss Miller. I think we're getting close to Lang. Mr. Garrett, if you are, don't you want a few more men up there? No. I would only give Lang a few more targets. Goodbye. I'll check with you later. What time you got, Chief? Almost one. She'll have to be going back to work soon. Yeah. Comes home for lunch every day. Bought quite a lot of stuff at the delicatessen for one person. Well, what did you say the name was again? Uh, Nita. Nita Moran. Hand the search warrant for 74. Look, uh, why don't we walk right in and flash it? Because if Lang isn't up there with her, I don't want her to know we've been there. She, well, there she comes. Back in the doorway, quick. It's a good thing we ducked. She sure does look around when she comes out. Now let's go up. Here are the mailboxes. Yeah. Uh, uh, here. Here it is. Moran. Second floor right. I'll try the hall door. Open. Go ahead. You better have your gun ready. I've got it. Right here in my pocket. This is it. I'll knock. Stay back to the side. What? Who are you looking for? Oh, the lady in this next apartment. She ain't home. She works. Maybe her husband's home. She ain't got no husband. She's alone. You want me to tell her something for you? Uh, no, no, thanks. Uh, we're just selling magazine Didn't subscriptions. Didn't you see the sign downstairs says no peddlers? You better get out of here before the landlord catches you. Hmm. Now it's magazine. Oh, I had to tell her something in case she mentions this to the Moran girl. Dumb me. Well, what now? You got a master key? Yeah. Well, let's get inside. Not so much noise. Well, I got a fit. And there it is. Yeah, now we can have a look around. Well, we can see a girl lives here, all right. Yes, but there's no sign of a man. Closet. No men's clothing. Nothing in there, I just... Just a second. You've got good eyes if you can see anything through that window, Chief. I can't, with that thick gray glass. 
I wasn't looking through the window. I was looking at this. Huh? What? The windowsill. Paint is chipped off in two spots. Old building. Paint dried and cracked years ago. The bath comes right under the window. Look at it. Hey, that looks like the mark of a rubber heel. A man's heel. Wouldn't have taken a bath with his shoes on. No. Let's raise this window. Slowly and carefully. Just a fraction of an inch so I can see out under it. That's enough. These window sashes are well oiled. Can you see anything? Opens on an air shaft. Between this tunnel and the next one. That window across the shaft would be second floor left in the next building. All right. Close it. Well, what do you think? Well oiled sashes. Marks in the old paint on the sill. That shaft is about six feet wide. Anybody could stretch a ladder or a piece of plank from that building to this. Well, there's no ladder or plank here. Well, that'll be in the other building. Rex Lang's private drawbridge. Holy smoke. What a gimmick. The gimmick is right. He never has to leave the place. Nobody ever sees him come in or go out. Come on. Then what's our play? I'm going to go next door. Check that second floor left apartment. If Lang's across there, Chief, he'll be barricaded in with an arsenal. Well, we're not going to take him over there. Where are we going to take him? We'll take him tonight when he crawls across that air shaft for his dinner. Get going. I want everything set up before Nita Moran comes home from work. Good thing you thought of that building next door. Imagine, that second floor left nailed up tight. You'd never suspect it was being used in the hall. Well, that's the way Lang wants it to look. The owner has a petty record. Must be helping Lang. For an extra high rental. You pick him up later. He can put him in. something across. All right. I got it. Rest and right. Mm-hmm. Come on. Now. Uh, what? Stay right out there, Lang. Right on your hands and knees. Oh, Keep quiet, miss. Don't try to crawl back. There's another man with a gun right under you. you let me get fire, Push the ladder. Coming down on the shaft. Get it, old boy. Grab it, Morgan. I got him. I got him. My leg. Let me out. Hold the girl, Hanson. I'm going down. What's the gas, Chief? There's Jeff Edwards over here. I see him. Chop. I'd have blasted you all if I could have... Your blasting to... days are over, Lang. How is he, Morgan? Looks like a broken leg, that's all. Hanson! Yeah, Chief? Call for a police ambulance. Okay. Who oh, tipped you off? You'd never catch me without a tip-off. Or was it Nita? Or that thieving landlord? Well, answer me. What is it? A police secret or something? You bet, Rex. You bet. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, 
here's the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Rex Lang was tried and convicted for murder in the first degree. He was executed in the manner prescribed by law. Nita Moran was convicted of major crimes in several states and is serving accumulated sentences of more than 50 years. Lang's landlord, Fritz Rudell, is serving 10 years for knowingly harboring a fugitive. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Philip H. Lord. <laughs> Thank you.